Hi, my brief today is uh, to speak on the state of the media and what can be done about it, if anything at all. Uh, before I begin or delve into the topic, I think it should be clear what we mean by the term media when we use it. I want to distinguish this term from journalism. Uh, what is the difference between media and journalism? Uh, journalism is a craft. It is a craft like being a doctor. It's a craft that comes with training. It has its own certain norms and rigors that its practitioners must follow if they are to do their job honestly. The media is the superstructure that surrounds this craft. In the same way that doctors need hospitals, they need chains, there are owners, there are administrators that go into forming a medical establishment, journalism is done in a superstructure that we will term media. So for the purpose of what I am going to be talking about, the media is the superstructure that allows it to journalism. This media consists of uh, whether it is television studios, uh, newspapers, printing presses, basically media owners who command and control and fund this whole infrastructure. And so where does the problem actually lie? The problem that actually infects journalism at its roots is a problem with the media and it often lies outside the practice of journalism itself. Uh, how does the media superstructure in India uh, define itself? Let's just look at some of the organizations that make up the Indian media. Whether you look at uh, print in India, English print, you look at Times of India, Hindustan Times, Indian Express, you look at the big Hindi newspapers, Jagran, Bhaskar, you look at the channels, you look at Times Now, you look at Republic, uh, you look at Arshtak, you look at India Today. Almost all of them are owned by people drawn from one small community, one small caste. They are largely from the trading castes and within the trading castes, almost all the ownership is Marwadi. What does that imply and what does that mean? What does it mean for this whole superstructure that we have to deal with? This trading caste is in any case the caste that largely funded the rise and spread of what we call Hindutva at the beginning of the 20th century. The printing presses that published uh, the books that uh, uniformized Hinduism, the Gitas, the Ramayans in published form that spread across the country were also funded by Marwadi businessmen from Calcutta, the same people who actually funded the rise of the Indian media itself. And this same ownership continues today. What is the impact of this ownership? The impact of this ownership is that while we talk of the diversity of media in India, the control of this media lies with a very small group which, with a shared ideology which is largely supportive of the Hindutva that constitutes uh, this country's ruling class at the moment, the BJP government as well as the RSS. The other thing that is quite clear is that when the ownership of the media is drawn from businessmen or the business class, they have other interests that tie up with the government. This country actually has a semi-liberalized economy. For any big business to actually work in this country, what does it need? It needs to be on reasonable terms with the government. Uh, you still need permissions. You need uh, the government to be on the right side for you to actually spread or propagate your business. What does that mean? That means both financially and ideologically, the owners of the media are beholden to the government. In some senses, they are not independent entities in any reasonable fashion. The result of that is that the government can virtually dictate or control what the media does without seeming to be doing so. This is actually evident in all that we see. You see the coverage of the pandemic. Uh, you see during the pandemic, there was a direct approach by Modi himself to the owners and the owner editors to broadcast positive news. Actually, this was largely what was done by the owners and editors. Why do they do it? While when I spoke of the medical establishment and doctors, at least there the medical establishment has a clear purpose, that is to make money, earn money as much as it can. In this case, there are even direct, indirect incentives that the media also serves as a way to keep the government happy so that the owners of the media can benefit in other ways in other businesses because many of them own businesses which are far larger than even their media interests. As a result, that what we call journalism is restricted by ownership and journalists who actually want to practice their profession in the way they are trained to do so are almost uh, not just, uh, they find it impossible. It's not as if they are unwilling. Most of them are quite willing to actually go take the risks that go with the profession, but they work in structures 
and they work and report to people who will not allow them to do this job in the larger part. Uh, so what happens with owners is that the owners are the same people who are appointing editors. You want to actually find out what a bad journalist is? Just look at the editor of a mainstream organization in India. That would more or less be a bad journalist. The owners are interested only in ensuring bad journalists who kowtow to the owner's line, the owner's interests are the people running these organizations. As a result, mediocrity is what defines the media in India. Good journalists who want to do their jobs at mid or junior levels, people coming into the profession have to kowtow to this mediocrity which is in charge of most of these organizations. This currently is the structure in which journalists operate. Uh, there is both at the top level and at the ownership level an ideological complicity and the second is a financial complicity with the government. So let us not put too much emphasis on the pressures the government puts on the media. That is it arm twists the media, it forces them to do its bidding. No, the media is complicit in the very actions of the government because a large part of the media in terms of its ownership and the editors who are appointed, the bad journalists that I've referred to, actually believe in this project of this government and are participants in the bigotry that define this government. So the question then before us is that given this kind of superstructure that constraints and defines journalism in this country, what can be done about it? And I do not want to suggest any utopian ideas or solutions. People will talk of different kinds of legislation, norms, ownerships, structures. Uh, there will be no change through a legal or legislative means simply because it is not in the interest of the political class to change the structure of the media. What does that mean? The structure that today the BJP and Modi exploit to their advantage is not a structure they created overnight. The Congress was participant, every opposition party in government was also participant in the same undermining of the structures or actually encouraging this kind of structure to prosper and proliferate. So in a real sense, there is no political will to actually change this through legislation or through norms that would change the very structure which defines journalism in this country. So then where is the way out? Large scale utopian solutions do not make sense. There's no point wasting our time about them. The things that can actually work are things that you as individuals, whoever is viewing this, whoever thinks about the media, whoever wants to engage with the media, what is it that any such individual can do? And the simple fact is that if you look around, if you look around the media today, you look around at how the government is trying to control or divert the media, most of the control or the attempt to clamp down is largely on small media, magazines like the one I work for, The Caravan, Digital Portals, The Wire, News Click, News Laundry, Scroll. Why is the government not doing the same thing to mainstream uh, newspapers or channels? Because it doesn't need to. The mainstream has already fallen away. These small organizations that are left survive because the same ownership pressures, the same bad journalists which run mainstream newspapers are not represented here. Why do these small magazines or uh, uh, digital portals actually work. They work because they have a direct compact with the people who actually read, view them or engage with them. There is no money that is coming in from big advertisement. There is no money that is coming from government. That money is coming directly from you. That need for you to invest and look at the media that really works is important. And that choice lies with individuals. People who complain about the media on a large scale in India are deluding themselves if they are not making the choices. What does that mean? If you switch on a mainstream news channel, whichever one you want to pick up, Times Now, Republic, and then complain about the con content you are seeing, you're already making the wrong choice because a mainstream news channel does not care whether you switch it on to curse it or to praise it. 
they want eyeballs, they are getting eyeballs. If you are subscribing to any mainstream newspaper, the Times of India, Hindustan Times, and you pick up and daily curse that you are not getting news, you are not getting re a representative sense of the country, then you are making the wrong choices. You should actually not be going through these newspapers in the morning because it doesn't matter if you are subscribing to curse, criticize, it really does not matter to the newspaper. What matters is that it is being bought or a channel if it is being bought. So if you do not exercise these choices, you do not actually punish bad journalism or media houses that are not doing what counts as journalism, then it really doesn't matter what criticism you offer. In the same way, if you do not reward journalism, that actually subscribes to the norms of the profession, that follows the checks and balances, uh, then you are actually again not doing anybody a service. You have no right to be complaining about what is wrong with the media in this country. How do you make those choices? First of all, I do not suggest that anybody should be endorsing media or organizations that completely agree with you. This is not an eco chamber. What you have to first look at is whether the organizations that you turn to, that you support, are actually investing in journalism from the ground, reportage. That is the core of journalism. If you are not getting reportage, if you are not seeing the country represented from across its dimensions, represented in terms of reporting on caste diversity, regional diversity, linguistic diversity, getting reportage from outside the metros, from smaller places, if you're not getting representation of smaller political parties, different political formations. And sometimes this reportage should go against your cherished beliefs it's, itself. It is not an eco chamber you are looking for. It should make you question your assumptions. It should make you examine your beliefs as well. If there is such reportage that is available there, that is the first thing you should support to the extent you can. You are not looking for an endorsement of your personal beliefs, in which case you really don't need journalism or media. You are looking for journalism that actually questions the exercise of power, whether that power is exercised by the BJP or the Congress, by Modi or an opposition government elsewhere. You cannot simply endorse media that is partisan, that looks only one way. In the current moment, it is necessary that the examination is of BJP, of the ideology of hate that spreads over the country, of Modi itself. But that can only be one large part of the media's job. That, to me, is the primary concern when you look for organizations. The second thing is that, please, yes, you must decide on opinion, look for opinion, but don't make opinion the end all and be all of journalism of various activists writing and ranting about the government, do not let that form your idea of journalism. That is a small, necessary part. Even opinion must be reasoned. It should be backed up by facts. It should be supported by an argument that holds together. It should not simply be about what you like. Uh, the third thing is that please ensure that you do not make journalism about individuals, whether it, first of all, I, when I say journalism, I'm not counting blo bloggers, YouTubers, citizen journalists. What I'm counting as are professionally trained people who follow certain norms of veracity that constitute journalism. So while it's good that you may support certain individuals, you may back certain anchors, you may follow certain people with large Twitter followings, you may want to look at somebody who has some substack. That is not going to, in the end, strengthen journalism or create the kind of media that can actually do what is required in a democracy. You need to look for institutions. It is only when you support and back institutions which grow and which extend and become powerful enough to look across the country and represent it in its diversity, which then hold up a mirror to the government, which question the exercise of power. Only then do we have journalism doing the role it needs to do in democracy. This cannot be done by individuals. Yes, please, by any means, after you have looked at institutions, support a journalist here, support a blogger here, it's good. It is good that these exist and these are quick fixes in our time that we do need. But this 
cannot be the way in which you get a sustainable media environment without institutions there is no journalism in the long term and without this journalistic examination in our country in the current movement you will not get accountability all the other institutions that are supposed to hold the government and to examination today actually fail to do so that is quite evident in what is happening around this the only modes of communication be be between the government and the electorate in this country there are 10 lakh voters for one mp the only possible communication between the government and the electorate is through journalism while it is possible for the government to communicate one way through government channels through propaganda through advertisement the only way for the electorate to examine power, to raise questions, to ask what is happening is through journalism that does its job. Essentially, if what I am suggesting is not possible, in some senses, we are laying aside India's claim to be a constitutional democracy. Your individual choice, I think, is crucial in this because this reform is not coming from anywhere outside. The, it is a structural reform. It will not be done by laws, legislations, legal cases. It will be done by individual choices. Thank you.